In this section, we are going through FortiGate VM initial configuration. So first of all, we have to set the FortiGate IP addressing. If you want to use the firewall in, uh, in a lab environment, in production, in, in any situation, in the first place, in the unboxing stage to say so, we have to uh, configure IP addressing on the box so that it becomes functional and reachable in the network. So this is our first step setting the, the IP addressing on at least one port. Next, we are going to configure and allow access to FortiGate Firewall. Now, as an engineer, you don't have to take information for granted. You have to ask questions and ask yourself questions if you're not in a uh, live environment with instructor or so. So, why is this uh, also in, important to allow access to a FortiGate Firewall? So as opposed to routers, most if not if not all of the of the firewalls come like blocked, so no information is uh, is permitted to the firewall. So as in this case, we have to permit to permit HTTP access to to the firewall. As in the next step, we will have uh, available as an option to connect to the FortiGate through the web-based manager. Now let's. Uh, take a look at how it looks in the in the web uh, the web sphere. So it's fine. The FortiGate uh, XAX course VM it's it's up. Going to the console, we see now the login. So by default, any FortiGate comes with the admin as a an username and no password. So we just hit enter. And here you have the the banner, the welcome and, the, uh, and exclamation mark. As, as said, we have now to, to declare the IP addressing on port 1. First of all, we have to go to the config system menu. So, config, system and interface. Now, edit and we set port 1. Okay, so we don't have to put any spaces, edit port 1, this is a good, uh, a good information. Now we have to set up the IP addressing. So set IP and in this case, in this case I will just uh, use an IP that's suitable for my lab environment. 172.27.1.1 and the subnet mask. And that's it. As said, we have to allow access to, to the VM, to the firewall anyway. So let's do that. Set allow and I just hit, I don't know if you have noticed, I set allow and hit the tab and it will do an autocomplete. Set allow access. Let's see what are the available uh, options. So as, as said, nothing is permitted. So if you have, uh, if you want to have like ICMP connectivity between, uh, between this port and any other uh, network element in, in, our, in our area, we will have to also allow ping access, so ICMP. So it's ping, HTTPS, why not SSH? And HTTP also, good. Now second, the VM has to have any IP connectivity. So to do so, it will need some route in its routing table. It will have to know who is the default gateway, where to send all the packets. In case no specific routes are present, we have to set up a default gateway so that the fourth gate will send all the traffic to that gateway. For this reason, I'll just hit end. By the way, let's see if you are, if you are in a menu, like we were in config, system, interface, and we were editing port 1. And as you can see, we'll just exit the menu, but also save the last config, just that you know. So, and we'll do the trick. Now, setting the, the default gateway for the fourth gate, we'll enter the config config router well, type of router static now what do we have here available again you don't have to memorize things you just have to go through them understand how they work 
and you will just retain the information on long-term basis this way. Uh, so we have to edit. So add and edit a table value. It's, it's about the routing table now. So edit and sequence number, the entry number. As we have no other sequences or, or any other entries, we'll just select, let's say, one. Set what options we have here. So we have the device, so enable, disable, gateway, out, interface. It's self-explanatory and very simple. So set, device, and we are editing port 1. So we will just select port 1 here and set gateway. Set gateway, question mark. So the, the, the CLI, it's basically uh, waiting for an IP address from our side. Again, just uh, configure what's, uh, what's suitable for your, for your network, for your lab environment. Uh, anyway, it's the same. And again, now to exit the, the configuration, the configuration menu, and also save the, the config, we just have to hit end. Let's see if, if now we have connectivity to the VM. So I'm in my computer now, and I will see if everything is okay. So I said dot one five five. And yes, we have connectivity. Let's see now, uh, as I provided a default gateway for the fourth gate, so it means that all the packets, it will be sent to the default gateway if it has any internet connectivity. So for the 40 OS, we have execute and question mark. We have a lot of options here, but you can see we have also ping. So execute, ping, and use, let's say, Google DNS. Excellent. We have connectivity, so everything is fine. So at this point, we have fulfilled successfully the two points that we had available in, in, the, in the slides. The last thing that we have, uh, we have to, to conclude and end this session is connectivity to HTTP, the, the GUI, the graphical user interface for the Fortinet. Perfect. So we see that we also have uh, HTTP connectivity. We said we have admin, no password, and hit enter. Yes, it looks like everything is fine. We have connected to the 48 VM64 image. And now we can just move to the next module. So see you in class.